on Skype and just let me know if you can hear me. So uh, I'll Can somebody um, just send me a message on Skype and let me know that you can hear me? This is Sister Kana, and we just finished doing the Lord's Prayer, and I was speaking about, um, you know, the women classes and why it's important for us to start connecting, especially if you're planning on, if you're planning on going into the wilderness. Okay, praise the Most High. Thank you, Sister Molly. Okay, so. Thank you, Sister Molly. Okay, so this is the women's class um, for any brothers that may come in so they'll know because I didn't probably get to tell everybody that this is the women's class and we're just talking about things pertaining to healing and as we prepare to start coming into the wilderness. Um, you know, a lot of people may think that this is really not necessary, like talking about preparing to the wilderness, because a lot of people don't think that they, it's time to go into the wilderness. Now, they see all this stuff going on around us, yet they don't feel it's time to go into the wilderness and starting to prepare. So that's a whole nother issue. But um, people are coming out of Babylon, and I'm no, no longer here by myself like I was last year. Um, brothers and sisters are coming out praise the most high and so people understand what time we are in so in that is why we're, we're going to start working on healing because like I just said before uh, because we were in captivity we were not doing things according to the most high at all nothing we was doing was pleasing to the most high and he said he winks at our ignorance so because he knows that he put us under a curse and that we couldn't have possibly have connected with him but now that we're trying to start to come back to the father it's very imperative that we figure out what's pleasing to the most high so as sisters and as women as the daughter of zion we need to understand what's pleasing to the most high so first and foremost we know that the um his his commandments keeping his commandments is it should not be grievous to us it should not be a problem for us to do the will of our Father and keep His law, statutes, and commandments. So it's important that we know His holy days, and y'all know how I am about the holy days. Um, understand that um, knowing the name, the proper name of the Most High, um, be in line in, quarter, in accordance to the baptism, and make sure that our family has been baptized for those, you know, who are at the rightful age or whatever that you know like that keeping our households in order because if your household is in order then everything else can function you know properly and see the most high he's the power of order so it's important that we understand how it's important for us to be in order you know and I and I had to I have to learn that even within myself as I become more organized and start to put things you know to make life a little easier for me you start to be very organized in everything that you do things everything has a place in your house you know your house is clean um you know it's not a mess and you're not um being idle because there's always things that you need to be taken care of so um i wanted to you know talk about these things um, with you all and then after you know after I finish this we'll go on Skype and if you guys want to talk so we can interject I kind of like Skype but it seems like today like we only have a few viewers so it, we could have done Skype you know like if I kind of knew can gauge you know when people are going to come and when they're not going to come or whatever but we can't but I can, I'll, I'll, I'll record this so it won't be a problem okay so um, you know learning how to um, you know prepare for this wilderness and learning how to heal there, there are some things that we, we will just you know have to do because I find that the more we start to deal with one another the more patience you need to have the more long suffering you need to be and you, you know we have to operate in love and kindness at all times and you know not not just when you're like in a good mood or you feel like speaking to people or you you know feel like helping but this should be your, your overall character and disposition at all times 
because the the scriptures tell us that we need to be patient, long suffering, um, kind, um, gentle, meek, you know, all these things. And um, it's hard sometimes when you got a lot of things going on to be this patient, long suffering person. When you, you know, you're going through things your everyday life and then you may have people who are not so nice and kind to you you tend to pick up bad habits and speaking to people you know in a negative tone if somebody snaps at you you may snap back you know so we have to um, understand that these things are very important so last week we went into second Titus um, 3 and 10 we, we went through some things but I just wanted to point out this because, it, you know, it speaks of having patience. It speaks of um, being long-suffering and, you know, these kind of things, right? So I'll read uh, second. Second Timothy, sorry, in 3 and 10, it says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity and patience okay so these are the things these are the attributes that we should have you know as we um, wait on your shyest coming and learn how to prepare to deal with our people because in Babylon you know people then you know you'll find some nice people but for the most part everybody is in a hurry they snapping at you they you know aggressive they don't have no patience you know, they want to do things when they want to do it, and that's it. But according to the Most High in Christ, we are to be meek. You know, we are not to be aggressive. You know, we are to have patience with people. We have to operate in love, and we also have to have faith in the Most High. So, now how do you do that when you're day to day? <laughs> you know, it's and what I find is that we read these scriptures and we'll know these scriptures, but how do you practice these things and put them in your life and make it a part of your life when you deal with people? Because even me recently, I'm guilty of it. You know, like I'll be waiting for a person to do something, but because they didn't do it at a time when I feel it should be done, you know, I'm grumbling, I may be complaining in myself, within myself. You know, I may say something that I shouldn't say, you know, and you have to catch yourself when, you know, you patience means patience. Meaning you're not complaining or speaking negative you know words out of your mouth when things are not going your way like now let me give you the uh, the meaning of patience just so we'll have it you know so I have said it okay just one mean I picked up a few but one is um, patience is the state of endurance under difficult circumstances which can mean um, preserving persevering in the face of delay or provocation without acting on negative annoyance, anger, and exhibiting forbearance. So basically, you know, that's what it is. When you're a patient person and you don't complain, you don't get annoyed, you don't get upset when, you know, you have to wait on others or someone else to do something. And see, in America and in the Western world, because we are women who go-getters, who gets things done, I know that's how I am, you don't need to have patience because you'll just do everything yourself. You don't need to wait on nobody to do nothing because you handle everything, you know, if, oh, if this needs to be done, I'll do it. Instead of waiting on, like there was someone who's supposed to do something for you, instead of waiting for them, you're going to go and do it yourself. And, I, and you know, in the Western world, that's... It's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're a, a married woman and now you used to doing things on your own and now you have to wait for your husband or even ask your husband to do something that normally you would do for yourself, you know, then you have to um, show patience. You have to show patience because 
if you step over your husband and just go do it, you know, maybe you'll get away with it once, twice, but after the fifth time of doing it, the, the man may respond negatively because then it shows like you don't need him for anything. You're doing everything yourself. And also, although you don't feel that way, this is what is, how it's coming off. I mean, and then what that does is when the woman always jumps up and do things ahead of the man, you create the you create a situation within the man that he won't do anything for you. He becomes kind of lazy and laid back because he's used to you doing everything. And then at the end of it all, you'll be tired and complaining about that because you'd feel like you're doing everything. And I find in uh, Babylon that's what a lot of sisters go through. They will always be doing everything. They're doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. Because they don't allow the man to be a man. They don't allow a man to do what he should do. And, and let the man do the things he needs to do so that you won't be doing everything. <clears throat> but because you don't really have patience, and I, I don't want to say it that way because maybe it's just that the man didn't do it, you know, or he wasn't going to do it. But these are the kind of things that we have to um, pay attention to and then, you know, uh, you know watch and cultivate it. Because you can easily go and do it yourself, but your husband may feel like, well, you know, what am I here for? If she gonna, she's going to do everything, and he may not even say anything to you. He'll just let you go and do it. And next thing you know, you find yourself doing everything because this, this is how you did things. You always jumped up and did everything. And so he's not saying anything. He just lets you do it. But then at the end of it all, you know, months, years later, you find that you're doing everything. And then you, you wonder how you got to that place. <clears throat> but if you had started out with just a little patience and told, you know, let your husband know what you expect of him and, you know, what you were willing to do and what you expect of him. And then once you talk about it, give him time to start to implement it. But, and I'm talking like this because we'll come into the wilderness and we'll have to start dealing with a lot of different people that we don't know. We, we never meant them, you know, we're going to learn different people's temperaments and things like that. But it's going to be to the point where you're going to have to rely on other people. You're going to have to learn the ways of other people. And especially with the men. The men are coming out with this whole ideology that, you know, they're the men. They, they're going to do and they're going to take care of different things. They, the men rule the nation. And they run the nation. Now, you know, that's a whole nother conversation in itself, dealing with, with that, you know, with, with the men. But you got to understand where they're coming from with this. For one, because of we've been in captivity and under the curses, our brothers have been on the bottom, and if you can relate to what I'm saying. Even the woman, we have been over them in regards of we were able to get employment, we were able to get benefits, you know, like any kind of child care, any kind of thing. Because once the man is not in the home, they open up a whole box of um, eligible requirements for you to get money and all kind of things. So men were basically, you know, pushed at the bottom. So now, when, now that they know who they are and they're coming into the truth, they, ha they have this prideful thing first of all they're happy to know who they are so they don't want to go through another situation of having a have woman a woman rule over them you understand on no level they don't want to deal with that so you can understand you know we have to be very patient with our brothers and understand what it is that they have they have gone through and what it is that um, they're about to go through. Now, sisters, you know, I'm a woman, so I, you know, a lot of us can say, well, you know, they, they kind of did it to themselves a little bit because of, you know, you know, some of the things that they had to go through. And it's true, but for the most part, it's due to the curses. We couldn't get around those curses. And the Most High was going to put us through what we needed to put put us through so that we can come back and understand that we need to worship Him. So our men, 
had to fall and go through whatever they they went through in order for them to want to and seek with wholeheartedly um, seek the most high. So I'm saying, you know, I'm just just saying that just to say, you know, you, you know, basically it's due to the curses and I'll, I'll just leave it at that. So now they're coming into this truth and to have to deal with women and we put we putting ourselves in this uh, position, you know, of authority still over them. They're going to do nothing but buck and fight with us. And this is what, you know, I'm kind of experiencing it now with some of the men that I come up with. Like They have an issue with it, and I can understand why. And that's why I try to be very, uh, you know, um, I try to be very humble in it and downplay it a lot. But I don't know why the Most High um, chose to do what he do as far as giving information about Kadesh and, you know, the whole, the whole thing that I had, I had gone through. But I'm not going to even question in most high. It is what it is. But I, I just know that I need to be humble. Humble in dealing with my brothers. To let them know that this, you know, this is for you, them. They need to handle this. They need to, you know, put it into fruition. They need to, you know, bring it to, you know, what it needs to be. Because I, I want to see these brothers rise up and be kings. I'm excited for, for them. I'm happy for them. But also, there's a situation in where the Most High, you know, did this in this way, and I don't know why. But what I'm saying, I'm saying this to say that our brothers, you know, they have a t they have a hard time with that. They need to be in authority over this thing. So even though now, like we're understanding what the role of the woman is, we 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 we're the backbone of everything. We're gonna hold everything up, but we need to know how to deal with the men so that they can maintain, um, you know, the spirit of the authority and kings, and we don't make them feel like any, you know, anything else, because they need to be strong in this. And uh, we need to help support them in any way we can, you know, and uh, make sure that they keep the laws, make sure that they keep the commandments, make sure that they, you know, doing the holy days correctly. But but it, 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 will, it will be how we we bring it to them, how we deal with them with it, you know, how we talk with them about it. And so that they, you know, they won't be bucking up against us, you know because we're giving you know helping them with this information we want to be help meets to these men and even if you're not married you know it's important to know how to deal with the men of the most high that's something that we're, we're going to have to learn we're going to have to learn to be humble you know meek very patient long suffering and and then we'll find that it, most of all, these brothers are trying to find the Most High. They want to be righteous in the eyes of the Most High. So it shouldn't be that much of a problem. You understand? And the only times, the only times I find that it may be a problem is usually when it comes to like correction. If you got to say something to them about something that they're doing. And even though they may have a problem with it, I think after they think about it, maybe they've slept on it or whatever, they'll come back to know if it was a righteous statement that you had to give them the correction on or something like that. I think they will, they, they take heat, you know, overall. But I just wanted to start talking to our sisters because of this thing. It's going to be a very trying for us coming up off of um, this whole Babylonian spirit and what we've been dealing with you know if you were the type of woman that controlled everything in your household your husband you know it's gonna be pretty hard to uh, learn to submit in in that way because even married sisters even though they may be married some sisters rule their husband they rule over their husband you know the husband just let them do whatever and just because your husband is not being forceful in that way that doesn't make it right our men have to learn how to be men how to stand up how to take care of things you understand and it will be it will take a lot of patience on our part 
just saying nothing sometimes when you know something needs to be said. <laughs> you know, so how do you say nothing when you know something needs to be said? It's very hard. So, um, you know, patience and, you know, all around, patience with dealing with your sisters. Oh. <laughs> you know, and, and that's a, a major thing that we need to um, get into. How do you deal with your sisters? Our sisters, from, from my point of view, and I've always felt like this from even when I was in Babylon from a young girl. It was something that the most I had put on my spirit about women. I, I didn't understand why they act the way they act. You know, there was it was like you couldn't have any girlfriends. Sisters are very jealous. They're very envious. You know, they most of the time they don't really like each other. And it usually beco comes on how you look at yourself. Right? Now, you know, if you find that you have a, we, we're dealing amongst the sisters, and we find, you find that there's a sister that, you know, you can see some negative attributes in her. And we have to learn how to deal with one another. And not just, you know, well, oh, she ain't talking to me, well, I ain't talking to her. Or if she ain't doing this, I ain't doing that. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you first try and test the spirit. And then, and then once the spirit shows you like who they are, then you have to see how you can deal with them. Now, this is even hard for me because I always seem to have issues with women. You know, they they'll claim to like me and stuff, but then I, you know, they'll do stuff that that is like, you know, they they really didn't like you. You know, but you don't you don't find this out for a long time. You'll think that somebody really is your friend, and then you find out that they're not really your friend. And you know, like, how do you deal with stuff like that? You know, first we have to learn to pray for one another. You understand? Um, pray, prayer is amazing. You know, you ask the Most High to intervene in a situation, and before you know it, that situation will dissolve, dissolve, or it'll, you know. It, it won't turn out as what you thought it was. You know, you could see it brewing because you you have, um, you know, a good sense of and feeling out how things can go. So you start praying about a situation and the Most High will just move things out the way. So if you find that we're dealing, or someone says something that you don't like, or they may have, you felt that they did a little um, catty remark towards you, or just a little jab, you know how some people can be. You, you may, you can either like pull the sister to the side, but like say we have our Skype meetings or whatever, and you know, we're getting to know each other, but then start, when, once you start getting familiar with each other, people, you know, they, they'll get very um, lax, and then they'll say things and they'll do things. How we can handle dealing with one another is just being open. If someone says something to you and they hurt your feelings, or they, um, you know, they did something that you didn't like, instead of like holding it in and, you know, not being honest about it or how you feel about it, we need to start learning how to talk to one another and be open to one another about how we feel. Because that's one of the main things I think women learn to do. Like if once you, learn, you, you have a, a man and a, a boyfriend and, you know, under your mother, you, you, you learn not to speak. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's good to be slow to speak. The scriptures tell us to be slow to speak. But you also need to be able to express yourself. It, it doesn't make sense to hold something in and then feel a way about it and not want to um, talk about it. And then you, it's just a negative thing. And then you'll end up exploding. You understand? It's good to, you know, be slow to speak if you, you know, don't want to respond back in a negative way. But it's, all, it's good if you can talk to a person and explain to them or express to them how you feel about something. And then, you know, you have a dialogue and that way you can um, develop an understanding with this person. And I'm just talking about building relationships with other women. Because we're going to be in this wilderness we're going to be, you know, living side by side to each other in tents. 
And so you, you're going to be very close. You're going to be able to hear everything. You know, you're going to be able to, <laughs> you know, you're going to be like you're living in the same room with a person and their tent will be right next door. Because I'm talking about when it gets like, you know, millions. That's in my mind. When we have tents right next to each other and we'll be, um, you know, right next to each other, we have to deal with each other, we'll be eating together, we'll be praying together, we'll be, you know, doing everything together and learning how to do everything together. So it's going to be important that we learn how to communicate with each other and, and not be so easily offended, you know, not let, um, you know, people take you out of your spiritual connection with the Most High. Because that what, that's what happens when you become angry, when you come, become upset, when you start to deal with malice and any kind of, you know, those kind of ap attributes. They, they're disconnecting you from the Most High. Because you know that the Most High speaks about love, kindness, meekness, patience, long-suffering. You understand? Um, I want to go to... Uh, uh, first Timothy and just read uh, first Timothy 6 and 11 it says but thou O man of a higher flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience and meekness so well let me um, read one up um, 1 Timothy 6 and 10, it says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from faith and patience themselves through with many sorrows. And, and then he goes on to say, But thou, O man of Ahia, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. So basically, everything is based about... Uh, uh, based around us operating in patience in love in meekness in kindness you know and you'll find that when you when you operate in those attributes you'll see a whole nother spiritual world will open up I mean you'll start to see blessing like good things happening to you on the regular because you are not even allowing negative thoughts, negative um, attributes, you know, negative gestures. I mean, you, you don't allow that kind of stuff in. So you start to um, operate in a whole nother spirit. You'll start to attract different types of spirits to you. So with that right there, I, I want to speak about that because I think it's very important. When you start to operate in on a certain spirit, spiritual level, where you just operate in, in patience with people, you're operating in meekness with people, you're operating in love, you will notice that you will start to attract a different type of people to you. Now, how do you do that? Well, let me just say first, it starts with pure thinking, right? When you start thinking a certain way, it changes everything. And then I, and I'm going to go to, a, you know, break it down even like this. Like, when you, you know, say a thought comes into your mind, just, uh, I'll say anything like, I don't, you know, <clears throat> you know, I don't feel like doing that or, you know, you know, that gets on my nerve or that person, you know, I don't like that person. And then you catch yourself in that thought at that very moment. And you go, forgive me, Father. You know, I repent. I mean, you can take it that slow with every thought that you think. You start to correct yourself in your thinking. Say, you know, like, oh, you know, like say if you used to smoke and you think about smoking a cigarette, let's say, crushes your mind. Well, right then you stop yourself and you repent and say, Father, please forgive me. Or you get on your knees and just pray, do the uh, Lord's Prayer, and you pray to the Father. That is the process that you start to take to remove, you know, negative things out of your life. 
you don't intake anything negative because we we already know we don't watch tv we're not you know listening to you know nothing crazy and stuff we're not intaking anything negative to our spirit so now you're only dealing with your thoughts and what you think and how you think and if you when you learn how to correct your thinking you really start to clean your slate and, 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 and protect yourself that you're not even letting you're not even allowing any negative thoughts into your temple and that's so powerful so I'm what I'm saying and maybe you can kind of write this stuff down because it's very important these are steps that you start to take as you start to clean your mind and your temple it first starts with one not allowing anything negative in your realm like if you have a friend and your friend is always is a negative friend you need to start dealing with that person if you can't tell them how you feel and tell them what you need from them and correct them if they can't change because some people ain't ready for all that you may have to start to separate yourself from them and so that way you can start getting what you actually need so that's the first thing you know you know uh, monitoring your intake of what information you're receiving from people what kind of conversations you're listening to what kind of like TV program all that stuff you're not even taking listening to any of that stuff then so you you monitoring your intake then you you're correcting your own self as far as your speech what you're saying out of your mouth and when you think uh, a thought that you know you shouldn't be thinking immediately you stop and you say oh forgive me most high or a higher forbid this is what I say if I think a thought because you know who can you can't control your mind you'll think something it'll slip in just that quick but if you catch yourself you act you say to the most high um, a higher forbid a higher forbid and so you just you you totally erase that from your 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 mental thinking you you saying most high please forgive me you repent for it or you start to um, just recite the lord's prayer okay so those are the first two things and i hope you guys you know write that down because this is the process of us starting to heal it starts with us with what we receive into our temple meaning our spirit you know who you allowing to speak to you so that what you hear has a lot to do with it if you hear somebody complaining all the time then your your spirit will take on that you know you have to know how to protect your spirit and so you watch what you say but you also watch what you receive from people so pure thinking is a part of that. Now I wanted to read something on from pure thinking, so that um, you guys can get what I'm talking about. Okay, first let's just go to Philippians four and eight, and I'll read that. It says, "Finally, brethren." Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So basically the Most High is saying we have to think good, pure, wholesome, lovely thoughts our mind and 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 thoughts should be on only the good things so you 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 definitely need to um be careful of the information that you're receiving and the information that you're speaking right you um spiritual he healing is from within like first your temple must be clean so and how do you clean your temple you there's no unrighteousness in you if, you, if your temple is clean, that means you're not speaking anything that's um, unrighteous and you're not receiving anything that's unrighteous. You understand? So um, I hope it, yeah, I hope y'all staying with me. I'm just I'm kind of like talking, but I'm just talking like I'm having a conversation. So I hope you guys don't mind. <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> it's important. <clears throat> excuse me. 
It's important that, you know, our thoughts become pure. And so those are the steps in which we start to take to um, get to pure thinking. Whenever you have a, a, a negative thought that comes into your mind or into your, in your spirit, you immediately um, repent and ask the most high forgive me or say a higher forbid like you know sometimes you may just do something if, if it's happened so fast you'll go you're walking down the street you're like oh gosh I hope I don't get hit by a car <laughs> you know what I mean and that's it's just a thought but you have to that's a negative thought like why would you think like that so you have to immediately say a higher forbid like why am I thinking like that I repent for that this is the process of taking taking away a negative thought pattern and then replacing it with something positive and you putting the most high in it a higher forbid because we know he is the beginning and the end of all things so you ask you 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 ask him to rebuke that spirit you understand any kind of old habits that you ever had that come back into your mind because you know you know sin is Habitual, like you, you, it's habit forming. If you was in a say, of, uh, let's say so a person was a drug addict, let's just say that it becomes a habit of you doing certain things, taking drugs, and so you have to first break that kind of habit. And when the thought comes to your mind, you have to rebuke the thought. You say, A higher forbid, like, oh, I don't ever want to go back to that. And this is the kind of thinking you, you start to um, program yourself into thinking. Thinking in the way that you speak to a higher to rebuke it. A higher forbid. You know, that, that will help you. You understand? That will help you get past any, um, you know, negative thoughts. Or so you may have to go immediately to in prayer. It depends on where you are. If you need to go into prayer, like go into the Lord's Prayer. Let me just pray about that. You know, all kind of things happen if you, when you relax your and you're not on God. That's why the, in the scriptures it said put on the full armor of your Shia. Because you have to be clothed in these scriptures. You have to, your mind has to be fully, you know, alert so that when these things come into your mind and these thoughts come into your mind, you have to be able to rebuke it right away. Uh, I hope you understand. Because you have to be clothed in these scriptures. You have to you know, um, and, and this is how we will start to learn how to um, heal. Because but it, cause at first it starts with you. Before you can start um, thinking about dealing with other people, first you have to get yourself in order. You have to get, you know, learning, like what I spoke about before, learning patience and long suffering. But also learning how to um, cleanse your your mind and you know your spirit of the things that you used to do. So pure thinking is a big big part of it. You have to understand that your thoughts and the things that you think about, the things that you speak about, all um, play a part in you healing. You know, um, I think um, Elder Lashawan did a. Uh, excellent teaching for the Sabbath and we have to put this up about the power of the tongue so what you speak out of your mouth you understand is very important because for one if you if you're a spiritual person if you are around spiritual people they know that that's the content of your heart when you the things that you speak of the things that you bring up everything shows where you are and you know where you are in your walk with the Most High so once you start to learn to understand that and then you you kind of um, pay attention to the things that are coming out of your mouth you'll be more accountable for what the things that you say and that goes vice versa with the things that you hear from people if you are around a person and you don't like the way they're speaking and then you don't like the way they talk you know it's up to you to to do something about that or change the way either speak to the person or change the, the conversation and, and, which, and how it goes but just understand whether you do or whether you don't um, change it it's, it's, it's um, affecting your spirit you are taking on every burden everything that you hear and you see and you touch that's why the senses are so important 
you know, what you see, what you touch, what you feel, what you taste, those things are very important because it affects your spirit. So you got to be um, conscious of, you know, your thinking. And that, that's the first part of it. So let's say I said spiritual healing is from within, connecting with the higher and receiving the Holy Spirit, not doing things like yoga or anything like that. It's through cleansing yourself through the word of a higher and his, you know, his, his, the words are in the book because he's telling us what to do. Um, pure thinking, righteousness, you know, being loving and kind. These are the things that's going to help us cleanse. Now, you have to think about this, guys. In, a, in Babylon, what we were normally doing, we was taking in so much negativity. There was none of this that we, you know, now that you read these scriptures of Philippians 4 and 8, we wasn't doing any of this. We were watching TV. 8 to 10, 12 hours a day, we're see, seeing blood, all kind of gory stuff, all kind of secret messages we were getting, everything that was not of the Most High. So now we have to reverse all this stuff. We have to learn how to go back to what the Most High you know, instructed us to do in order to you know, get us in the right standing so that we can even connect with Him. If, you, you're, if your temple is filled with so much sin and you're doing things that you're not supposed to be doing, how can you connect with the Father? And that's why they created the TV and all these other distractions, just so that we could not connect back to the, to the Most High. You know? So, and the things that um, the scriptures tell us to do, things like fasting and praying and being loving, living righteously, you know, pure thinking. And I mean, those, those are just words, but learning how to put these things into action. So pure thinking is the first step of, of this. How you're thinking and how and what you're receiving into your spirit, you know. So, and, um, you know, meditating on the words of the Most High, getting into that book, you know, what I like to read I think is a uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, because it gives you a lot of wisdom and it gives you a lot of understanding of what, what the Most High likes. He's very clear in Proverbs, you know, on what he likes. And uh, I just want to go through, just, I'm going to just pick one, Proverbs 2 and 1, let's just see, and I'll just kind of read it, just so, because, because we should take the time out to read the most high's word you know and i'm sure a lot of us do so because we're we're talking we're dealing with the saints here so i'm sure sure everyone you know takes their time out and get into the word but and what i like to focus on, on the book of proverbs because it gives you a lot of understanding of what the most high likes so let's do proverbs 2 and 1 it says my son if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding yea if thy criest at the knowledge and lift it lift this up thy voice for understanding if thy seek her as silver and searches for her for for hid treasures then shall thou understand the fear of the most high power and find the knowledge of a higher for the Lord Ahia giveth wisdom out of his mouth cometh understanding, knowledge and understanding. Sorry. Proverbs 2 and 7. He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Proverbs 2 and 9. When thou, when shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment, and equity, yea, every good path. Praise Ahia. Proverbs 2 and 10. When wisdom entereth in thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee, to deliver thee from the way of evil, from the man that speaketh forward things. Proverbs 2 and 13. Who lived the path of uprightness? to walk in the ways of darkness who rejoice to do evil and delight in the forwardness of the wicked whose ways are crooked 
and they f and they forward in their paths. Proverbs 2 and 16, to deliver thee from the strange woman, even from the stranger, with flatter flattereth with her words. Proverbs 2 and 17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth, and forgetteth the covenant of her power. For her house inclineth into death, and her path into the dead. Um, Proverbs 2 and 19, none that go unto her return again, neither they take hold of the path of life. Proverbs 2 and 20, that thou may walk in the way of good men, and keep the path of righteousness. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. Praise the higher. Proverbs 2 and 22, but the wicked shall be cut off from the earth and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Praise the higher. So this is, you know, just really just giving you understanding of what, how the most high feels about things. And I liked when he said that, um, one about keepeth in the land. Hold on. Yeah, try Proverbs 2 and 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. See, and, and that's talking about the most highest kingdom. When his kingdom comes, and he's only looking for the righteous, the ones who are trying to do right according, you know, to his will. You know, any he's not dealing with any sin. You know, the Holy Spirit, like I've, I've said before, if we are the replica of the Holy Spirit, we have to do things in a righteous way. If we, if the woman is the Holy Spirit, in the union, in order for the um, the Holy Spirit to dwell in our temples, we have to be righteous. The Holy Spirit is not dealing in an unrighteous temple. That's not going to happen. So even as women, and we know that the woman is the replica of the Holy Spirit, we feel that automatically because we're women, we should, you know, have the Holy Spirit or we are the Holy Spirit. But that's not true because the, the Holy Spirit will not operate in an unclean vessel. You understand? So you have to... Um, we have to understand these things and start to work on ourselves so that when we start to interact with other people, we can start to see, you know, and even as a woman have to be able to correct and let people know, no, we can't do things this way. We can't operate this way. We have to do it this way. And a lot of people may not want to receive that from you. A lot of people may not want to, um, hear the, you know, kind of correction, especially, you know, some men, they can't receive it from a woman. So we have to be mindful of how we bring these things to people. We have to be patient. We have to be love. We have to operate in love, deal with kindness. And even when people don't want to receive it, you may do everything right and they still want to attack you. But all you can do is, you know, praise the most high and give glory to him and hopefully that you planted a seed with that person you understand even when, when you're dealing with operating amongst other sisters and how you have to deal with them you know you but sometimes you just have to leave people alone <laughs> and you know and, and sometimes not even say nothing to them if if you feel that the the, the, um, the situation is going to call for you to come out of your own character you just may have to say you know what I'm not going to say nothing to them right now because sometimes people can make you very upset and you want to lash out and lash out back at them you know oh gosh so I know I'm just talking and talking but praise the most high uh, I hope I've made some sense and I'm not I have not um, gone off in too many different you know things but I really just want to talk about you know, healing and learning how to strengthen our character. So with those kind of things, knowing patience, you know, long sufferance and pure thinking, how to cleanse our minds so that to and, and, and fill it back up with things, righteous things. That's why it's important to stay in the scriptures. So when we do this fast, and I was talking to Sister Molly today, and she was like, yeah, this fast is going to be very important. And yes, Sister, you are absolutely right. Praise the Most High for you understanding. This fast is going to be very essential. 
that um, on um, June 18th when we go into the 30 day fast and if you choose to do a water fast you choose to just not eat all together but really take the time to go into the scriptures meditate on the most high you know we will be interacting via um, email sending out scriptures you know any kind of prayer you want to add or anything you want to talk about you can add it and so that other people can receive what you, you know from your spirit we'll, we'll be um, feeding off each other's spirit so because that's all we that's all we're gonna have we're not gonna be eating any food we're gonna be going into these scriptures and so your interaction is gonna be needed because we need to to, to eat off this word so it's important when you fast not to just be fasting for to lose weight or anything you fast to fill your spirit so that you can um, cleanse your temple so the Holy Spirit can dwell with you and that you can receive information from the Most High and uh, you know that's that's very important and I praise the Most High you know for everybody who's going to participate in, in this kind of um, cleansing because we are going to learn how to operate um, together and how to love one another and how to be patient cleansing our minds and our thought patterns so that we only receiving yeah because let me tell you what happened I I was working on the song I'm trying to upload the song now but the song is called blood on the streets and you know talking about the lynching because I, I it's a song from um, Billy Holiday uh, strange fruit but I did a you know turn a a different version where it's rap and stuff like that but I had to go into get some pictures of hangings and uh, you know brothers you know dying on the street and stuff like that and I all I can do is cry well and it was because you know I've been in such a situation where I haven't been watching any kind of I don't watch TV I don't even watch seeing nobody getting shot or any kind of blood you know forgive me for even bringing this up but I I just want to say that when you start to remove that stuff from your life it shocks you when you have to see that kind of thing see any kind of blood any kind of gory anything you, we so that's the way we should be about looking at some of this stuff that we have been exposed to once you start to cleanse your spirit you don't even know how to react when you see these things it would hurt you because see we've been so far removed in babylon we with the horror movies i mean with the gory stuff the news people you know all this stuff that we exposing ourselves to you become immune to any kind of feeling and this is what satan how he's been working on us but once you start to cleanse once you start to remove that stuff from you when you see a picture with some blood on it you can't even look at it and it's amazing that we will get back to that state. That's the that's the state the Most High want us to be in, a pure state. Like how they say, as a newborn baby, you don't know anything. You don't see anything. You don't look at no sexual nothing. You don't, you know, see nothing, no blood or those kind of things because you're just not exposing yourself to it. So I just thought it was real interesting and it just made me cry because it was just like wow. But you know, I've always been a sensitive person to that kind of stuff anyway, you know, to um, you know, those hangings or out the plight as black people, slavery like I could, I had a problem with watching Roots. You know, I I still can't watch those kind of movies when we were slaves. Something in my spirit it just it, it, it makes me mad, it makes me hurt, you know, to know that, and now knowing the truth, you can really relate to it. But even back before, when I didn't uh, know the truth, I couldn't watch those kind of movies to see our, our people, the black men and the black women in slavery and being mistreated, you know, because I always felt like we were kings and queens, you know. So anyway, so just, you know, I just wanted to um, bring that out to you, how, how, how that was something for me to have to do, put these pictures together, very gory of, you know, hanging and men, our brothers being shot on the tr street like the Baltimore incident, incident and all these other incidents that's happening across the United States, you know. You know, but we can get back to that where we don't even see that stuff. We not even, you know, we're oblivious to it 
because we're not letting it into our spirit. So, so it's about an hour, guys. So I, I, I don't talk myself to death. <laughs> and it's hard to talk when you don't have people to, um, you know, intercede and, you know, conversate with you. So I want us to go on Ustream now so that way I can, you know, get you guys feedback and then now we can talk. But I first want to give you that, you know. And now we can go and talk about it if you guys don't mind, if you have a little more time. Because it's only been about an hour that I've been on. Okay? So now we'll take the next maybe, you know, half an hour. And now we can kind of talk. And you can tell me what you feel. And let's express this about us cleansing ourselves. Okay? So I'm going to say bless you. And uh, shalom. And I'll see you guys, whoever want to talk, on, um, on Skype. Okay, I'm going to sign off. <laughs> Bye.